Recently, NASCAR has been the target of criticism, particularly in relation to media rights and the team owner's rejection of the company's corporate model. The team owner and the drivers, however, will not just be unhappy about this since NASCAR has made yet another choice that has managed to stir up the NASCAR community. Given that NASCAR's tire contract is not really acceptable to them, owing to their history with this company, the teams and drivers will need to exercise extreme caution going forward. Goodyear has agreed to another contract with NASCAR, with a prior one having been inked in 2017 and expiring this year. Despite the fact that there are numerous factors, they have generally shown to be trustworthy. The team owners are urging NASCAR to exercise more caution because there have been numerous blowouts, which we will address further in this video. Hello NASCAR fans and welcome back to NASCAR Live, but before we begin, subscribe to our channel and hit that like button. And let's begin. Before these agreements were extended, the Ohio-based company had been associated with NASCAR since 1954, and for the previous 25 years, Goodyear has served as the exclusive tire supplier for the sport's top three series, Cup, Xfinity, and Trucks. From a reliable and financial standpoint, NASCAR is undoubtedly quite pleased. Even though the team owners are not entirely satisfied with the latter, the contract has been extended, giving Goodyear the longest-running continuous partnership in NASCAR history. Furthermore, as part of the contract extension, the annual Goodyear 400, a feature of the Darlington, South Carolina Raceway Spring Race Weekend and the first race of each season's throwback weekend, will continue to be sponsored. Richard J. Kramer, the chairman, CEO, and president of Goodyear, made the announcement from Nashville, Tennessee, and added, From our manufacturing plants to offices around the world, racing is ingrained in our culture, and the importance of our relationship with NASCAR is reflected in the quality, performance, and engineering we put into every Goodyear Eagle race tire. Our performance on the racetrack plays an active role in the success of the sport and inspired the development of our consumer tires, fueling our commitment to take performance and innovation to the next level. But it should go without saying that the alliance between NASCAR and Goodyear has undergone a substantial evolution, simply because NASCAR has been used as a testing ground for Goodyear racing for many years. Tire engineers are constantly developing, creating, and producing tires that can withstand even the most extreme track conditions. Goodyear has some dependability difficulties, as crew members in NASCAR have acknowledged and you can't be in the sport if you're producing subpar tires. Apart from that, the business has not directly experienced any problems with the sport or the nature of the partnership. Goodyear offers a technology that holds up and performs well in racing situations. This technology also guides development and sets Goodyear's consumer tires apart from NASCAR's evolution. As a result, new tire technologies, like as the Racing Slick, introduced in 1972, were necessary for tires to evolve as well. The 18-inch Goodyear Racing Eagle tire, used on NASCAR's next-generation car, is the most recent tire innovation, following the multi-zone tread pattern in 2013 and the radial tire in 1989. In his remarks on the renewed agreement and what it means for the sport, NASCAR President Steve Phelps said that Goodyear has been a trusted partner to the NASCAR industry since 1954, playing a critical role in our shared pursuit to deliver the best racing in the world. For more than 25 years, Goodyear Eagle tires have been the only component that connects the stock car to the racetrack. For many generations to come, our relationship will allow us to innovate and push the envelope. But if the deal they've struck pleases the presidents of both Goodyear and NASCAR, according to one crew chief, what's the big deal? One of the low points of the 2022 Goodyear campaign was the NASCAR Auto Trader Echo Part Automotive 500 at Texas Motor Speedway, which was the cause of the blown Goodyear tires from the previous season, which was ruined by several accidents throughout this race, all of which were brought on by the right rear tires failing. In comparison to the previous record of 13, which was established in 2014, there were 16 caution periods. In this race, the record for lead changes was also broken, rising to 36 from the previous mark of 33. The reason for several of these lead changes is that race leaders experienced tire failure, which Goodyear does not want in their effort to have their contract with NASCAR renewed. 
even if it doesn't seem to worry the organization that oversees the sport in the least, it is apparent that the team members and drivers who experience tire failures will be unhappy with how the race ended for them early due to tire failure. The cars that experienced this failure, however, were faster than other vehicles on the track at the time, which is precisely why these cars experienced the issue they did, according to post-race study, which led us to believe that it was no coincidence. In response to this, Scott Miller, senior vice president of competition, said, We met with the teams, working through what the setups were, what the air pressures were, to try to get to the bottom of it. There were a lot of teams that reported no problems to us post-race, but did admit to being on the conservative side in terms of air pressure and being closer to the suggested minimums that Goodyear recommended. Following the race, communication between team members and Goodyear engineers was extremely active since the engineers were interested in learning how the teams were using their tires. Greg Stucker, the director of race tire sales for Goodyear, discussed this issue in a post-race interview, saying, We've seen a lot of right rear tire issues tonight, not dissimilar to what we saw earlier in the year in Atlanta. We are getting as much information as we can from the teams, trying to understand where they are with regard to their settings, air pressure camber, suspension, and so forth. I can say without a doubt air pressure is playing into it. We know that plays a part. I'm not saying that that's the only thing, but it's certainly a factor, and we're just trying to understand everything else that might be going on. If you ask Rodney Childers, the crew chief for Kevin Harvick of Stuart Haas Racing, that is the real issue. He'll argue that it's not. According to Rodney, the biggest reasons of blown tires are NASCAR suspension travel restrictions and the aerodynamic advantages of lowering the car, which his driver went through in the Texas race described earlier. The shock limiter rule is the cause of the tire problems. If you could bring the car lower in the back and the diffuser to its ideal downforce position, the teams wouldn't be running the tires with lower pressure. You would basically run more air in the tires to maintain the travel more, even if you could run the car lower with the suspension. Making the back diffuser an additional half inch higher than it is would also be helpful because that is where it produces the most downforce. What is the answer to this problem, which seems kind of impossible? Considering that Goodyear is here to stay, it's obvious that one is needed. To get the diffuser closer to the ground, the crew chief would like to lower the cars by modifying the suspension. Therefore, it would have the ability to produce additional downforce, but Childers claims that this is not an alternative. The only way, in his opinion, to get it lower and go faster is to let air out of the tires, something that NASCAR is not currently permitted to do moving forward. He also claimed that NASCAR teams are not allowed to lower the diffuser to the ideal position for maximum downforce because doing so results in the car being locked by the limiters. In contrast to the tires used up until the 2022 season, NASCAR's low-profile tires were mounted on 18-inch rims and featured significantly shorter sidewalls. However, it appears that the boost downforce wasn't very significant, and Childers concluded his remarks by saying, if you get the diffuser, one tenth of an inch lower by squishing the tires more. It is free speed. It's like you added more spoiler to the car. Now that the team owners are upset with the business model and the TV media rights have not yet been renewed, NASCAR obviously has some problems to deal with. The future of the sport will be exciting. As of right now, things might spin out of control and cause a situation akin to the IndyCar 500, leading to a potential split within the sport. We're waiting to see how things turn out. So, what do you think of the partnership between Goodyear and NASCAR for tires? Please share with us in the comments section. Meanwhile, next July, when race cars are zooming through downtown Chicago, Grant Park will undoubtedly resemble a scene from the upcoming Fast and Furious film. Except that in this film, the Fast refers to how quickly the city decided to host a NASCAR street racing weekend, while the Furious refers to city council members who claim that the entire transaction lacks economic logic and transparency. The controversy around the race weekend in July, which will be a first for Chicago and NASCAR, began in the summer of 2016. The 2.2-mile 2 .2 race course will be set up around Grant Park, the museum complex, and even Michigan Avenue on July 1st and 2nd, according to a three-year agreement inked by Chicago Mayor Lori Lightfoot. And now let's take a closer look at that contract. According to this contract, which was obtained through a Freedom of Information Act request, NASCAR must pay the city a $500,000 annual permit fee, as well as a promise of 15% of the net commissions on concession and merchandising, plus $2 for each entry ticket. In 2024 and 2025, the permit fee will rise to $550,000 and $605,000, respectively. 
The agreement offers NASCAR complete broadcast, sponsorship, and signage rights, as well as its racing weekend through 2025, with a two-year extension option. Only a $50,000 security deposit must be paid by the racing group from Daytona Beach, Florida, in order to cover Grant Park's losses. NASCAR official Brent Gamble refused to provide any information in an email, only saying that NASCAR will be responsible for security. The contract makes no mention of security fees incurred by the city or NASCAR, nor does it stipulate how much the organization must pay the park district to rehabilitate the area after the first $50,000 deposit. The contract specifies that a third-party landscape contractor will instead evaluate the site before and after the race and offer a damage assessment and restoration estimate for all parties to consider and agree upon. NASCAR, the contract specifies, is ultimately responsible for that. In accordance with the arrangement, Park District representatives will also receive free NASCAR credential passes and general admission tickets. The mayor claims that the benefits mostly exist elsewhere. According to a report commissioned by NASCAR, the race will bring in $100 million in tourism and construction-related revenues to Chicago. These revenues will go toward everything from scaffolding construction and event setup to leftover spending on lodging, dining, travel, shopping, and entertainment. It appears that a video simulation was the first step in how the incident came to capture the mayor's office. The race in Chicago is a result of NASCAR's ongoing efforts to increase its fan base. And that ends today's episode. We sincerely hope you enjoyed our video. If you did, please click on the like button and share with your friends and family. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to see even more of our incredible videos. You can also check out our other videos that have been specially selected just for you. We'll catch up in the next one. Thanks for watching.